That moment. Upkeep, Sergio on the stack, hard racing. Will Delver flip? Behind that suspense lies pure math. Delver of Secrets is one of Magic's most iconic wonders, the engine of countless tempo decks. Flip it early, and you are suddenly pressuring your opponent with a flying threat, backed by efficient interactions. Miss the flip, and your entire tempo plan loses momentum. In this video, we will model the deck mathematically break down the probabilities and see how both players can make predictions and adjust their game plan accordingly. Let's uncover the science behind the flip. We begin with the theoretical setup and introduce our main character, Delver of Secrets. This card is a staple across formats, famous for its 1-1 body and a powerful ability. At the beginning of your upkeep, you look at the top card of your library. If it's an instant or sorcery card, you reveal it and transform the Elder of Secrets into a 3-2 flyer. This defines an early game tempo plan, the ability to deploy pressure while keeping mana open for interaction. A protected Delver that flips early can easily carry a game by itself. Now, to analyze this, we need a model for our deck. We'll divide it into two main categories. Spells, capital S, instant and sorceries, with a slight abuse of definition, and non-spells denoted by capital N, creatures, lands, and occasionally other permanent types. These are deck building constants, fixed by how the deck is constructed and not by in-game events. Next, we introduce a few variables that depends on the game state at a specific snapshot. We'll denote by D the total cards left in the library, by H the cards in hand, and by X the number of spells currently in hand. When I say snapshot, I mean a specific moment during the game, usually right after Delver's triggers goes on the stack. Don't worry about memorizing these letters. Each section will include a legend in the top right corner to keep things clear. The most fundamental concept in Delver's Secrets analysis is the natural flip, checking the top unknown card of your library and transforming Delver if that card is a spell. This event is largely outside your control. Once Delver is in play, the only thing that determines your odds of flipping naturally is deck composition specifically the number of spells you've included. The math is simple. Using the classic probability formula, favorable outcomes divided by total outcomes, we get that the probability of a natural flip is the total spells in library not yet visible divided by the total cards in library. Here, visible spells are those already known to both players, either revealed or cards in public zones such as stack, graveyard or exile. To build the formula, we start from the total number of spells in the deck and subtract the visible ones, as well as the cards currently in hand, since those are no longer part of your library. In case of mulligans, the math doesn't change. Just remember to count the cards you put on the bottom of your library as if they were still in your hand. Let's specialize the formula for the most iconic flip. During the upkeep of turn 2, after having played Delver on turn 1, Delver triggers goes on the stack. If you're on the play, no spells have been cast yet. So visible spells is zero, and your library contains 53 cards. So, probability of a natural flip is S minus X divided by 53. If you're on the draw, your library now has 52 cards, giving the probability of a flip as S minus X divided by 52. A simple lookup table for S values between 30 and 34, and X between 0 and 5, shows your flipping probability across different builds. With a classic 32 spells deck and 2-3 spells in hand, the probability of a successful natural flip is roughly 55%. This gives a direct way to quantify your early game tempo potential, how often you can expect Delver to become a 32 flyer without help. So far, we've seen things from Delver player's point of view. But what if you are the opponent? Can you also estimate whether Delver will flip? The same general formula applies. Probability of flip is the number of spells remaining in the library divided by total cards remaining in the library. However, from the opponent's side, both S and X are known. While S can be estimated from common deck lists, for instance around 32 spells in a 60-card monoblue Delver deck, X is truly hidden information. According to probability theory, X follows a hypergeometric distribution, which models the chance of drawing a certain number of successes from a finite deck. Without diving into math, the key point is that the expected value of spells in hand is proportional to the overall spells ratio of the deck. We can calculate the expected value of X, or in plain words, how many spells we would expect to be in hand on average, given the proportion of spells left in the deck. For every card in hand, the chance it's a spell 
matches the proportion of spells in the deck. If we plug this expected value back into the probability formula and simplify, something unexpected happens. The outcome is completely independent of H and X. We are left with the expected probability flip, as the remaining spells in library divided by remaining cards in library. This expression depends only on the visible information, what's on the battlefield, in graveyard, or in exile. If we assume a 60 card deck with 32 spells, the opponent's practical vision of the formula becomes the following. Expected probability is 32 minus visible spells divided by 60 minus visible cards. This means that, even without knowing our exact hand, a careful opponent can make a statistically informed prediction about whether Delver is likely to flip next turn, just by tracking what has already been revealed. Let's apply the formula to real in-game scenarios. In this first situation, we look at the battlefield and the graveyard configuration of the Delver player. For simplicity, let's assume that there is nothing in exile and nothing currently on the stack. We can easily count 5 visible spells, all of which are in the graveyard. We can also see 14 visible non-spells in the graveyard and on the battlefield. Using the formula from the previous section, we can plug in these values. That gives us an expected flip probability of approximately 65.85%. That's significantly higher than 50%, meaning that it's more likely than not that the Delver will flip. So, if you were the opponent here, you'd probably expect the transformation to happen and plan your next action accordingly, perhaps holding up interaction or preparing to deal with an attacking toy to flyer. Now, let's consider a different situation. Again, Exile and Stack are empty, but this time we count 15 visible spells and 6 visible non-spells. Plugging these into the formula gives an expected probability of flip of about 43.59%. This is slightly below 50%, meaning a flip is less likely to happen on the next upkeep. In this situation, as the opponent, we might make a decision based on Delver not transforming, for example, choosing to tap out or to play more aggressively. After a quick count, the formula is simple enough to give you a sense of how to play the situation just by keeping the fraction in mind. This can be useful in both online and in-person games. Magic is a game of strategy, intuition and storytelling, but beneath it all, it's also a game of numbers. Delver of Secrets turns that hidden layer of numbers into a moment of suspense every upkeep. Once you see the math, you start to see the patterns, how chance bends to deck constructions and how probability guides tempo. So next time Delver triggers, you will know. You're not flipping for luck, you're flipping for science.